How you doing, everybody? It's uh, Tuesday, the 29th of December, 2009, and uh, it's around six o'clock in the evening here. And I just wanted to talk about a couple of things today, if I could. One is um, I was recently got a bit of a, a dressing down on email about the fact that I'm always giving out about everything, which is true. And uh, <coughs> the person who wrote the email was a woman, and she insisted that uh, instead of being negative about everything, what's your answer to a lot of these problems? You, you have all these opinions and all that. You must have thought about it. Well, I haven't really, but uh, over the last few days, I put a small list of things, only six, six things, okay? And I want to discuss them with you now. And it's six things, but it really is only five, okay? Because uh, I don't have any authority within the state, any political authority. I just give my opinion, as I say. And this is my little opinion. I think if this were enacted tomorrow morning, it's certainly not going to be enacted by this government we have in power, but if it were enacted by some sort of uh, benign, sort of populist type of a government, I think it would be a, I think it would make a huge difference to society. And uh, I think it would change the whole mindset of the population, people at large, okay? And the first thing that I would do is I'd introduce a whistleblower's charter. And it would be sacrosanct, it would be written into law, be part of our constitution, in fact, I would pass it as part of the constitution, be part of the constitutional guarantees for everyone in society. That if they saw a great wrong being perpetrated by the, by the authorities upstairs, by their sen seniors and superiors, there would be a body that they could go to and report it and know that something would be done about it, okay? In other words, it would not be put in a fail and forgotten about it, okay? Uh, and really that would be just an extension to the second thing which is transparency and the way that I would see transparencies, transparency been more effective in, in society I think that ordinary people the way you would have on a jury system ordinary people should be taken on an ongoing basis on a rotational basis throughout their life and be put into positions where they sit in and quangos and government bodies and all the rest of it, and they monitor what's going on they just sit there and monitor what's going on. And then at the end of their little period, their three month period or something, a new person is appointed. That, that person, he belongs to the people. It'd be like having a commissar, I suppose. Like the people would, go, oh! No, no, that, that's what that is. He, is. It'd be like, he would be like a commissar. And if he saw something wrong, he'd put his hand up and say, Excuse me, I, don't, I think that's against the law. Or, could this be correct? Who, who are you? Could this be correct? Uh, I'm going to report this. And he goes out and he reports it out. So lots of people would think, throw their hands up and say, "Oh, dreadful! Do you want to, do you want a cure? Do you want to have a transparent society? Then let's have a transparent society." And this is my suggestion about how it's done. There may be better ones. All right. The third thing then is about corruption and secret societies. And I think that anybody who holds down a senior position within the state, a senior position within any semi-state body, any politician or anyone who holds any public office at all under pain of going to the pokey for a serious amount of time must declare if they are a member of any secret societies. And the secret societies would all be listed out. It'd be a whole list then. We'd have to find out what secret societies are operational in Ireland. The Masons, Opus Dei, all that type of stuff. All right? And you, they would have to be declared. So when you got a ballot, it would tell you, uh, Miss, Mrs. Such and Such, or Miss Such and Such, or Mr. Such and Such, member of Obus Day, member of the Freemasons, member of the Knights of Malva, all that sort of stuff. Okay, so you'd know what hymn sheet they're singing off. Okay, so that would be the third one. Then we'd have to have statutes dealing with nepotism and cronyism because nepotism and cronyism are rampant in Ireland. And it's a, it's a nepotism really is a hangover of it's unofficial it's an unofficial monarchist system, and uh, it's it's appalling it's truly disgusting. It's sort of like political incest, and it's just disgusting. And it has to be it has to be removed from the body politic, or the body politic will rot. 
that's the way I see that one. And then we come to the the final couple of ones, which are straightforward ones, and that is direct intervention by the state to alleviate the unemployment situation. The state needs loads of things done with state things like schools, with uh, uh, public works, etc. We have lots of civil engineers and lots of carpenters, lots of bricklayers, lots, lots of people from the construction industry. On the whole, set up a state body and employ them directly and get all this work done. Oh no, 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 that won't be done. No, See, that's too obvious. That's too straightforward. No, no, no. you got to have brown envelopes, nepotism, cronyism, arse licking, brown nose and all that sort of stuff. That's what that's we're good at. That's what us parties, we're brilliant at that. See, we survived under imperial power doing that for 500 years, nearly four and a half hundred years. And we carried that forward into our own state. The English left here in 1922, but we're still at all that brown and all that groveling, you know, master grovelers. Paddy's master grovelers. Anyway, the final thing then is, is to do with the banking situation. This banking situation is something that I go on about, I go on about it non stop, and I will go on about it non stop. This this actually could bring, this actually, if this goes really wrong, this actually could implode our state, our little state. But at the minute, it looks like we're in the 54 billion we've borrowed from the European Central Bank for NAMA. If we're wrong with that, say, just on, on, a, on a good day, we're wrong just by 20%. That's going to cost us about 11 billion plus the interest, about 15 billion. And then all the direct interventions that we're going to make into the banks, which is going to be up to about 30 billion in total. Okay? So, and we're never going to get that money back. That money is all gone forever and amen. Good luck, goodbye, over. Money gone. The big international banks. Okay. Now, uh, what I can, I could never understand is if it had me and I had been in power or I had been a minister and had some serious amount of power and made a decision, that decision would have been. Close those banks, banks gone, all banks that are insolvent or bankrupt gone. Psst, wound up, bing, bing. All the bank personnel are put to one side, and what we're going to do is we're op going to open up communal banks, and they're each going to have a capitalization of, say, 100 million. We're going to open up 50 of them. That's going to cost 5 billion. That's nothing in comparison to what we're talking about here. 5 billion. So we don't even have to borrow the 5 billion. We have that in the National Treasury Management Agency. So we're going to get it from the National Treasury Management Agency at literally zero interest, zero rate of interest, or a very small amount of interest. And it's going to be paid back over 30 to 50 years. That's how it's going to be paid back. So these banks have got to make money. But they're going to make money because there's going to be 50 of them. Some big some big uh, cities would have two or three of them. Small, small cities wouldn't have any. So, you know, they're going to be spread through the country where the population is, that's what they're going to be. So Dublin will have a clatter of them and the, and people will be able to go in and borrow money. Small business people, entrepreneurs will be able to go in and borrow money. Not for speculative purposes. Forget about all that property shade. Psst, no, no, gone. That's all finished. No, this is for factories. to make people work to get employment. That's what this is for. To generate real wealth. Capital, labour, together end product, sell it on the international market. Okay? And if you can't compete, don't be trying to compete against the Chinese. Alright? Anyway. The bottom line about it is about I see this. There's six things. Our, our state, our society, they're not going to enact those things. Because nearly all of them pose a threat to these people in power. These people in power are wedded to corruption. They're wedded to nepotism. They're wedded to cronyism. That's how they survive. They survive in all this. So, they're not going to be enacted. I'm throwing them out. I'm challenging people. I'm sending people. You tell me. You, you've obviously thought about things. Things that could be done. You tell me all the things that could be done. I've come up with five or six. You tell me what you think should be done to change our society and change Western society, change the values of it. So that it becomes an egalitarian society representative of the people and not of a, a cute little who is a cute who elite at the top. Let's let's hear the let's hear what you have to say. That's what this is for.